given that we're talking about methods of reconstruction for mastectomies, I think it's important to talk about the alternative to mastectomy. Um, you, uh, as a patient, may come in front of me uh, to discuss alternatives if your breast surgeon has suggested that you can undergo a lumpectomy but um, thinks that you're a patient who will benefit from what is nowadays called oncoplasty or an oncoplastic approach to a lumpectomy. First, we need to talk about what a lumpectomy is. A lumpectomy is different from a mastectomy. In a mastectomy, the entirety of the breast is removed, leaving behind all or most of the skin. Um, and then the breast has to be reconstructed by placing something underneath it. A lumpectomy is part of what is called breast conservation therapy, where only the tissue that has the tumor within the breast and some surrounding buffer tissue or margin tissue is removed. That is to say that in many women, a lumpectomy can be performed and leave behind most of the breast tissue and most of the breast skin, if not all of the breast skin. Uh, in patients who undergo lumpectomy, they need to go on and get radiation in most circumstances because that is part of what research studies in the past demonstrated was important for patients undergoing lumpectomy in order to have equivalent cure results in comparison to patients undergoing mastectomy. Uh, having said that, when a lumpectomy is performed and tissue is removed and a patient goes on and gets radiation, um, that lumpectomy and the absence of the tissue in combination with the radiation can leave a lump, rather not a lump, but a divot or a concavity or a dent, if you will, in the appearance of the breast. Um, and so uh, more recently, what breast surgeons and sometimes plastic surgeons have been doing is rearranging or relocating some of the tissue underneath the breast skin in order to fill in the hole that was left behind the lumpectomy so when a patient goes on to get radiation, they don't have a dent or a divot or a concavity that can take away from the natural appearance of the breast. Um, that's a, a minor form of oncoplasty. Uh, oncoplasty can have a more important role in a woman who uh, comes to the cancer treatment process having some degree of sag to her breast or who have breasts that, is very, that are very large. Those women have the uh, opportunity to, at the time of the lumpectomy, undergo a breast lift or a breast reduction. If you recall what I said earlier, part of the important process of preventing a dent or a divot or a concavity in the appearance of the breast after the lumpectomy is rearranging the tissue of the breast in order to fill that hole that was left behind after the lumpectomy. Well, the process of performing a mastopexy or a breast lift and the, perform the, the process of performing a breast reduction also involves rearranging tissue. And so that process of rearranging the tissue for the breast lift or the process of rearranging the tissue for the breast reduction can be performed in conjunction with the lumpectomy to leave a result um, for a woman where the breast is lifted in the case of a breast lift or a mastopexy or reduced and lifted, which is the case for a breast reduction. So the way that unfolds for a woman is that if she has large breasts, let's say, and has always wanted to have smaller breasts to begin with, she may undergo a, a lumpectomy and undergo a reduction on that side, often performed by the breast surgeon. But then I, as a co-surgeon, will be working on the contralateral side to perform a reduction on the non-cancer side in order to leave the woman with two breasts that are both reduced and lifted. If a patient has breasts that have sag to them, um, that are droopy, if you will, uh, but the woman doesn't want to have smaller breasts, the patient um, on the side of the lumpectomy will have a breast lift, and I, as the co-surgeon, will work on the contralateral breast um, in order to perform a breast lift, in order to provide some symmetry for the patient after she's undergone the lumpectomy and breast lift on the cancer side. There are some important considerations that we need to make when we do this. Um, if you recall from other segments, I've stated that when patients undergo go radiation, they often develop some shrinkage uh, of the tissues. So we know that as part of the breast conservation therapy process, a patient is almost always going to get radiation, and thus the cancer side, the side with the lumpectomy, 
is going to undergo some shrinkage. So when we are doing the contralateral symmetry procedure, whether it be the lift or whether it be the reduction, we often aim to make that side ever so slightly smaller so that when the side that has the cancer undergoes the radiation, it shrinks to be as equivalent or symmetric as possible with the non-cancer side. Having said that, while it's always our goal to do that, there always is some degree of asymmetry and the cancer irradiated side may end up being the larger side or it still may end up being the smaller side. Either way, we do everything we can to try to bring about the most symmetry possible.